right here at this one past six in this KVK, the biggest Queen Ditto Zul Lang report just took place. It was an insane battle between 2489, which houses some of the biggest players like Barba TC Ataturk and Fo VN, against 60GT, a kingdom of epic proportions because they've never lost a single KVK and they don't want to start losing now. So both sides were fighting very heavily to control this pass six because this pass six was a key defense. If you want to see how the Queen Ditto Zul Lang Garrison really performed on this pass in this extremely unique KVK where any rally is possible, then you definitely should check out this video. So let's just start off with a little bit of context because the rallies in this video are going to be extremely confusing and you may look at them like, why would they run this rally? Well, we're going to start off with something that is fairly simple to understand, but a lot of players overlook it. Currently, this KVK is a Warriors Unbound KVK and one of the biggest features of a Warriors Unbound KVK is the artifact system. This system basically allows you to change whatever troop type a troop's skills are based on. For example, if you get the archer skill and place this on a Richard, a Richard I, usually an infantry commander, the archer artifact will change any stats that he gives the infantry into an archer stat. This means that any stats on Richard's skills will become archer based. It doesn't change equipment, but it does change all of his skills. And this is why some of the rallies that 60 GT runs are extremely confusing, but they are extremely powerful. Now also, why would they really bother with this pass six? They've still got pass seven and pass eight before Kingsland even opens. And I'll tell you exactly why. If 60 GT did take this pass, which it doesn't look like they will, 2489 has kind of been dominating them, then 60 GT would have access to build into this zone. They wouldn't be able to fall anywhere until they burn their way over to these structures. But for the most part, if 60 GT got access to 2489 zone this early, it could basically mean they win the KVK from here. Because then you would still have around two more weeks till Kingsland for 60 GT to just battle their way through the zone. It is very hard to maintain yourself in a zone like this unless you can fall, for example, onto the passes that 60 GT would have to do. But if they, would, if they manage to do that, fall on the pass and build their way into this zone, burning away all of the territory for 2489, they would win the KVK because they would get access to Kingsland on both, like this whole half of the map. And it would basically just mean they're fighting this one half of the map over here. So this would be an extremely key zone for them to control, but it seems like 2489 understood this and they really threw everything they had at this pass. There is also a couple things to note when doing a pass garrison. When you are doing a pass garrison, you are basically at the complete advantage because A, you can reinforce the pass basically from the safety of your side. There is no risk of the enemies charging in and attacking you. There is no risk of counter rally AOE. There's no risk like that. You are basically safe on your own side of the pass, just attacking people. You are going to be able to just get free kills. All of that stuff is extremely easy to do when you are on the opposite defending side of a pass. Also, passes can't really be swarmed like a flag can. A flag, you can have like up to 10, 15 marches on it. I think it is 10. Even a fort, you can have 10 marches on. And this really makes a difference. With a pass, you can only hit it with up to three marches. That means either three rallies or a rally plus two people swarming or two rallies and one person swarming. So really swarming is out of the question for a pass unless they have unlimited troops because it is extremely, extremely, extremely costly to swarm a pass, especially if you just want to take it. If you're trying to swarm a pass and you just have two people or two marchers that are swarming it, you're not going to make that big of a difference. And some pass swarms can do something like 50,000 dead troops per second. It's ridiculous how many deads you take from just a pass swarm alone. So swarming passes is also pretty much impossible to do. Also, as the defender of a pass, you have the ability to counter rally on the rally. The rallies can't, they can double rally the pass. I guess that's true, but you can counter rally the rally through your own pass with the safety of being able to basically reinforce by taking one step out of the pass because no one's going to stand in, an, in a level six pass AOE from a Zul Lang. You can just take like two steps forward and you're filling the rally up. So being on the defending side of a pass is really good. You also have the option to just straight up push out of the pass and fight everyone on the other side. The enemies don't have the option to knock away the pass reinforcements. Their best hope is just to try and wear them down. Here in 2489, let's say if 60 GT was fighting them, could push this murderable out of the pass to try and hinder the reinforcements of the rally, which could be a reason that they can sustain the pass for way longer than if it were a flag fight or if it were a fort battle. That being said, the same would be true if 60 GT held the pass. If they managed to capture it, then they would be able to defend it with all the advantages I just mentioned. 
So having a pass on the first and initial capture is always extremely important. And this pass basically spelled the, either the win or the loss of the KVK. And 2489 really understood this and played their cards well. So now with all of that out of the way, let's go over the reports. And we'll start off with the smallest report. I just want to say quickly though, thank you to FauxVN for sending me these reports. And also to a few people from 60GT who also sent me the reports. I can't pronounce their names. I will. I just can't speak their language. So I really do thank those people. And if you are watching, you know who you are. So the first thing I want to start off with is one of the, this is one of the smaller reports. And you may be wondering, Attila Henry, but it's the thing I mentioned before. He is running an artifact, which makes his Henry a cav march. And this is actually a pretty good rally because what happens is it's very anti-swarm. And since they are the rally that's going to be taking counter rallies and possibly even swarms from the enemy side, they wanted a rally that if it got hit, it would sustain itself quite well. And I think this was definitely a good choice. Attila has high counter attack damage, high white damage, and then Henry has just got straight up revenge damage onto his opponents. He's also extremely tanky and he has a lot of counter attack as well, plus high defensive stats. So Henry and Attila is actually a really good rally. And I think it's actually very, very fitting for the situation that 60 GT was in. In terms of the garrison, he was running a Ditto Zul Lang, and the only other rally you could run that's a cavalry rally is like a Nevsky Joner and Nevsky Minna, but that's extremely swarmable. And Attila Nevsky, even then, is also quite swarmable because Attila doesn't provide as much tankiness. But Ditto Zul Lang, I'm pretty sure Barbatisi Artok would be running a complete full crit and iconic set. The stats here are much more in favor of the garrison besides attack. The cavalry stats, you got 259 attack, 194 defense, and 117 health. But for the archer stats on the garrison side, you got 250 attack, 213 defense, and 124% health. So the stats on the garrison overall are higher, not by too much, like it's a very minimal amount, could be attributed to different to gear differences, could be attributed to talents, stuff like that are probably a reason why these stats are slightly higher for the garrison. But for the most part, I think the reason that this rally lost is A, they were definitely taking a counter rally at some point. This trade is too bad to be a non-counter rallied rally. They also may have lost reinforcements, possibly 2489 pushed out of their zone and attacked them. And the pass had a lot of AoE, which means a lot of reinforcing troops could have been taking a lot of damage, which is one reason that this rally would have traded pretty negatively. Overall though, it was about 1.2 million dead for the pass to almost 2 million dead for the enemies. So the pass definitely traded a lot more positive here than it would have negative. That's a one to do trade overall, even on kill points. So really good trade for Baba here, and it was a great pass defense. In the second rally, 60 GT made a huge mistake. They ran the Attila Henry with the wrong troop. So they didn't actually put the artifact on the Henry here. So he traded really, really, really poorly overall. He could have traded a lot better if he had the artifact. I, re I reckon it would have been about 20 million or maybe even up to 25 million on the pass and possibly around 30 million on the rally. But unfortunately, they did make the mistake here. And for the rally side, this was another amazing report. Another basically one to two trade. Now here is the biggest garrison report run by foe. And I also have the rally report for this so we can look at exactly what happened. You can see the pass here kind of munched on a bunch of people with their AoE. This is a large amount of kills, this AoE alone. The rally obviously took the most damage, but this time the person whose name I can't pronounce did actually artifact their Henry. So there was no mistakes. All this would have been a completely even rally report, and Ditto actually performed quite well here, even against the Cav Rally. This is a very strong Cav Rally. It's extremely anti-swarm, high white damage. Henry's actually got a fair amount of skill damage and a lot of skill damage taken reduction, and it traded one-to-one -one on the rally, basically. Three million power difference, but for a pass, that's a really, really good trade. And for the rally, that's also an amazing trade. Probably a bit more astonishing that the rally traded that well in a pass situation. And I think it's an extremely respectable trade. The people here fought for a while, both maintaining their side. And in the end, I'm not sure who won. I think the rally probably cancelled is what it looks like here because no one actually got a defeat. Now, in terms of Zulang AoE, and you wouldn't really think Zulang would be an amazing garrison because he's only really got the AoE damage, but his damage is just so high that even his AoE, when he does the AoE, is still super powerful. So starting off, he got 32,000 deaths here. 40, almost 50,000 deads here, couple thousand deads here, that was useless, couple more thousand deads, 42,000 deads, there are a lot of deads here, and I'll just scroll through, 73,000, 10,000, 10,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, lots of dead troops here on the enemy side, they are taking massive deads, 100,000 deads, this guy just stood in the AoE and got like one shot, so these deads are extremely high, and they definitely account quite well for the pass overall, 
bringing them up about 20 million extra kill points. Once again, though, the trade isn't that much of a difference. It is probably about a million deads worth of troops on the AoE, though. So it was a very, very good idea to run the Zulang. It also made it much harder to reinforce the rally without getting hit with AoE. I can presume a lot of the people here were trying to reinforce the rally, or maybe they accidentally dragged and stood next to the rally, and they were just taking mental amounts of deads in T5, T4, all of these amounts of units that were just crazy to lose. Now, the rally side was sent to me by this member of 60GT, and I do thank them very much. Here's their profile. It was very, very kind of them to send me this rally. They were, I think, the only person that responded, but they sent me exactly what I needed. So here's the rally report from the side of 60GT. And they got swarmed a lot. Like, this is a lot, a lot of swarming. There is a ton of swarming on this rally here. And you know this is swarming because A, the rally does have no AoE at all. And B, all of these are basically, like, in a row. So someone's swarming with four marches, someone's swarming with six, seven. So the swarms on this rally were insane. And I'm surprised the rally traded as good as it did because swarming a rally really does put a massive hit on its effectiveness. Putting these massive debuffs on a swarm definitely make a rally much weaker, and they managed to sustain the rally for as long as they did. So the report is obviously still the same for the pass and the garrison, but on the swarm, this rally traded amazingly, and I think it's because of the just extremely high amounts of counter attack. This counter rally was an Attila to Cater, and they took 110,000 serves to 62,000, and don't forget, Attila to Cater's throwing skills off into the Attila Henry. All Attila Henry's got is Henry's revenge damage and the massive Attila counter attack. So this was an amazing rally report for the defending side. Now here's the swarm from some of the biggest players on the 2489 side. For the most part though, they weren't really trading at all positive. Like it's not even close. And the debuffs they were putting on, yeah, they were making a difference. But these people were taking massive amounts of sev wounds. For a battle like this, you do have to take into account if you're swarming a rally, you're taking the sevs for the team. Because the only thing that Achilles here is really getting in benefits is that he's going to be debuffing the rally. His Guan may silence it. Ditto Zulang also came in here. I think this was just Foe trying to return the Ditto back to his city as soon as he could. Because otherwise, you know what would happen. He would have to march it all the way back. And if he just hits an enemy rally, it's going to die instantly. So that was a really smart move. Same thing with Baba here, probably just returning his Ditto Zulang back to the city. And then another counter rally came in. It was the same thing in Attila Takeda. Onto the Attila and Henry. This one ran for longer. And overall, it actually was a bit better than the first one, but once again, the rally still traded highly positive. There were a few dead units in here, so someone's hospital clearly filled up, and this is an overall pretty good counter rally. It definitely would have put a stop on the amount of damage that the Attila Henry would have been dealing if it had not been counter rallied. Then a bunch more swarming ensued. This person took 9k deads. This was a crazy good trade for the rally. That's like 4 million kill points. Another massive trade for the rally. So you can see swarming these rallies really is not practical. Fo actually got an okay trade compared to the other ones here, just because a Guan Yu Sargon is putting massive debuffs. Then another swarm in from Fo. This person tried to swarm with Nevsky Joan. Actually didn't trade too bad, but they ran their march into the ground. So that could be a reason why they didn't trade too good. Fo came back in with a Boudicca Tom Tomiris. Once again, not actually too bad of a trade with this massive debuff being thrown on the rally as well. Zulang Nebus, another swarm in from Fo here. This is once again, not too bad of a trade. So it seems that Fo's marches must be really high tech and really high equipment. The Zhang Yu William definitely didn't do, didn't do too good. Um, there doesn't seem to be any more counter rallies yet. There was another bunch of swarms here. A lot of the swarms here got wrecked, taking large amounts of deads as well. It didn't seem like they were just taking sevs. A lot of their hospitals actually just straight up filled up. Possibly their marches were getting swarmed while they were swarming, or even the rally just put all their troops in the hospital and gave them a ton of deads. Like this person here took around 70,000 dead troops from swarming the rally. Another bunch of swarming came in. These swarms are actually making a really big difference. Like a Zulang AoE is 15% all damage gone. Nebu is dealing a ton of damage. CPO is putting a 30% health debuff. So these swarms definitely change a lot. A Boudicca is putting massive debuffs on this rally as well. So it's important to remember that this rally is taking a ton, a ton of debuffs onto it. And it's still traded basically even with the pass. So that does say a lot about the power of having an extremely anti-swarm rally on a pass. It seems that for a while there were no counter rallies from the 2489 side until this Attila Pakal came in and once again they are running the artifact so that you do know that this Pakal is, an, is technically a cavalry Pakal and this is once again an extremely extremely anti-swarm rally. If someone tries to hit this rally it's basically going to go nowhere. You're just going to take a ton of serves for nothing. Overall, though, the rally traded fairly negative. They did manage to inflict 20,000 deads onto the attacking rally into the pass. And the thing is, within Attila Pakal, 
you're probably not going to take the rally out and it doesn't have too many debuffs. So overall, this was kind of a pointless counterattack rally. Another rally in here, and this is from Baba, and this rally actually traded, I would say, positive almost. It was a Pakal Harold. It's an interesting rally. You don't really see Pakal Harold rallies anymore, but Baba made it work, and this rally traded really good in terms of hitting the actual attacking rally into their pass. I'm not sure about if this rally got swarmed or not. I presume it wouldn't have because it did end up trading so well. Eventually, though, this rally probably got cancelled because there is no defeat, but overall, once again, the Attila Henry did win by about 4 million power, though this is definitely the best counterattack rally we've seen so far. Now, what was the overall trade for the rally? And I can say it's actually really positive in terms of the amount of sev wounds they inflicted. They inflicted 7 million more severely wounded units onto all the enemies. This is from the rallies, the counter rallies. All of that actually counted a lot towards giving this rally an overall positive report. The deads were basically equal in the end. The rally did take about 50,000 more dead troops, but in a report with 10 million, 50k troops is basically nothing. Those 7 million said wounds is nothing to laugh at, bringing them about 200 million kill points in front of the garrison. Overall though, the Ditto garrison did perform really well, and I think it is great for things such as forts and passes where you can't really get swarmed. Ditto's full anti-swarm kit is not as effective as some of the other commanders out there, such as Jan Ziska and Heraclius, who have a lot of AoE and a lot of anti-swarm, but then again, Queen Ditto still does an amazing job using her debuffs as a great anti-swarm technique. Overall though, this was an extremely intense battle for both sides, and we'll have to see over the KVK how it plays out. Whether or not 60 GT may actually break through this pass is something yet to be seen. Now, if you guys really enjoy my content, consider becoming a channel member. I've just updated all the channel perks you get. So now when you become a channel member, you get a little cool logo of a commander next to your name. You get priority reply to comments. I have you added in an exclusive spot on my Discord server and it really supports the channel. The link to become a channel member will be in the description and hopefully my pinned comment. Now, I do want to say I thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.